so it's cheaper than diesel central heating and it's a lot nicer heat as well the thing that uh, when you're sort of new to the boating or the idea of boating you won't often have had experience of what a boat is like with diesel central heating compared to a stove and uh, I've obviously I tried both because when I first got this boat it only had diesel central heating ah, it's a bit hot. and um, which is fine in uh, late August early September even into October I was putting it on a bit more and the boat was pretty chilly in the mornings and it takes about 20 minutes to sort of get a bit warm so there's a mornings where I was all wrapped up for the first 20 minutes half an hour while a diesel the, 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 warm the radiators up and stuff and uh, you know but it was burnable once it got into November the diesel central heating started to struggle in the sense that uh, yeah I, it was I mean I tried putting on a timer it's an Eberspacher I think the Eberspacher if you anyway um, and uh, and it has a timer so I put the timer on I thought I've got to get up at 7 because I was working I was still working at the time three days a week I sort of retired and came back part time for a year and uh, so I was up at 7 and so I thought I'll put the central heating to come on at 6 and it'll all be toasty but what happens is for the first couple of minutes it sounds like a jet engine taking off it's quite noisy and I think it might have disturbed people behind me it, at the time it was more next to a couple of boats well this happened a few times um, so I felt a bit guilty for having this noise it was almost as disturbing as a generator would be at 6am so that was a bit of a, a downer with the diesel and also if it's late at night and there's boats all around you one behind you know if you're in one of those spots like the popular spots like Ellesmere or Nantwich and you put you, you, you're almost like I'd just like to get, you know, say it's 11.30, I'd just like to get a little bit of heat in the boat, you know, because it's going to be a chilly night and, and go to bed nice and warm, blah, blah, blah. But you think, if I put that thing on, it's like 11.30 or it's midnight, and they might have probably gone to bed or, you know, and you're going to be making this racket, certainly for the first five minutes or so. So it's, it's a bit, it's a bit antisocial in that respect, but... Okay, it's a factor. It's not a huge one. It's not, you know, I, I could live with it. <laughs> I could, yeah, I could live with it because I was the one putting it on. Obviously, it's the question is other. No, I felt other people could live with it. It wasn't a, it wasn't like it as loud as a generator. It's a distinctive noise. Uh, so, so there's that. There's the slight noise issue, which isn't ideal. But more than that, right? Where it started to struggle was when it got down to about zero degrees, which it did on some mornings. It struggled to get the boat warm enough. Um, and I don't know how this is set. I haven't looked at the temperature settings on it. So it might be set fairly mild for, I, for all I know. I, I don't know. I always like to, on boat systems, understress them. Don't have anything running at more than 70% capacity for any length of time, any significant length of time. Never have things flat out, certainly for long periods. Because you, you're going to wear them out. And it was the same thing. Um, so I should have checked the Eberspatcher and sort of turned it down once I got the coal stove. Um, anyway, di different thing. I, I, I might uh, put that on my little to-do investigation list. Um, check what temperature it's set to run at. It's just set at the time. It was insanely difficult to understand. Uh, it's just... Anyway, uh, that was another story. And I did it, but... Um, it wasn't really quite doing a job and the other thing was I noticed condensation with the diesel central heating as well condensation on the windows now at the time I wasn't leaving windows open what I found was things changed when I got the stove put in the coal stove uh, it, it, it was it transformed the boat it's a different kind of heat altogether it's drier it's a much drier which most of the time is, is also more comfortable because it means clothes dry out inside as long as you keep a window or two open so now my standard procedure is to keep a couple of windows open of a night again you know that's not if any axe murderers watching i was just joking you know i never leave windows open everything's padlocked but uh anyway ha ha yeah so um 
I'll leave windows open on off, you know, the off side, not on the towpath side. Although I'm sure it'd be fine, you know, I'm sure it'd be fine. I met a young guy, he didn't even have a lock on his door, he just used to close his door, and he'd gone halfway around the country. You know, through Stoke, through Stone, a couple of places where they're supposed to be not ideal. Rugely was one place for some reason. Anyway, um, so yes, the heating. So it tra it transformed the boat. It just it just it just transformed. And one of the big differences, right? Here's the thing. One of the big differences, not just that it's a drier heat, right? So I never get condensation now. It just doesn't happen once the coal stove's been lit. I can also leave a window or two. I say open. You know, they just. So it's a few inches along the length of the window. It's not a massive, but two of those. And that helps keep fresh air. So the boat doesn't feel stale and muggy in the mornings, um, which is nice. Um, there's, no, there's less damp. Brilliant, less damp. You don't want damp. You know, damp, damp, apparently damp's bad for your lungs as well. Um, someone said, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower the revs in a minute because I'm coming up on some moored boats. <laughs> 